Hey guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits, and inside of this Lightroom tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this nice white, minimalistic Lightroom preset from scratch. So stay tuned, we're going to show you how to create photos just like this, show you how to get that nice white Lightroom preset, how to build your own Lightroom presets from scratch, and how you can take this minimalistic vibe and apply it to your photos today. You ready? Let's do it. All right, let's get started together. Now, the Lightroom preset we're gonna be basing this look off of today is found in our Signature Edits white collection. So if you're interested in these presets, you can go ahead, check them out in the description below. I'll make sure to leave a free sample that you can download. Otherwise, let's get into it and show you how to make this for yourself. So I've got a photo in front of me here that I downloaded from Unsplash. You can use any photo you like. If you're looking for free raw photos to practice on, you can head over to signatureedits.com and download some files for free to edit along with me. Okay, with that out of the way, let me show you what we're gonna do today. Now, rather than just show you, okay, set the exposure at minus one, contrast at 23, or you know, a bunch of really specific values that teach you nothing, let's talk about how we get this effect in the first place. If you actually look at the Signature Edits white preset pack, and I go through it, the easiest thing that you can do to improve your photos is to look at other people's presets and editing and say, okay, what are they doing here and how can I apply this to my editing later on? So you can learn a lot just by looking. So for example, if we look at this preset right here, you're gonna see that the blues, the colors, pretty much are super desaturated except for the oranges and the reds. And the reason the oranges and the reds are left the way they are is because the skin tones are found in the oranges and reds. So if you're actually to desaturate the reds and the oranges, all of a sudden your photo is black and white. So that's why you leave those. So we've decided whatever we're gonna do with this image, we're going to take all of the saturation out of pretty much every other color. And that's gonna give us most of this effect, honestly, just right away. Now the other thing we can do, if we compare it to this preset here, is the blues are definitely being brightened. You can see that because the sky is getting much brighter once you apply the preset. So let me go ahead, go over to our luminance panel, and I'm going to raise the blues up a little bit, the aquas, and the greens. Okay, so we've made some progress here, before, after. Now let's just go through and kind of enhance this effect a little bit in the calibration tab. If you've never used the calibration tool before, well, I have a tutorial elsewhere on the channel you can check out. If you don't have this tool, it's because you're using Lightroom CC instead of CC Classic. So this isn't integral to creating the look, but if you have CC Classic like I do, you can go ahead, open up calibration, and we're just going to take some more saturation out of, you guessed it, the greens and the blues. So we're gonna leave our saturation more or less where it is in the reds, and that's just going to further enhance that effect of just really taking the saturation out of everything. Okay, so we've got our base look, I'm gonna say, is pretty much established. Now let's just make this preset a little bit more poppy, a little bit more modern and less flat looking because on a raw photo, it's really not super interesting to look at. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by lowering the highlights here and I'm going to raise the whites up. That's gonna give us kind of more of that washed out, washed out, that's not the right word, but just it's gonna increase the contrast of our image, give it some pop, while lowering the highlights is going to save it from clipping too much, okay? Make it a little bit softer. We're also going to raise the shadows up a little bit, and we can drop the contrast a little bit too. Now if this seems a little bit silly, a little bit too far, we're going to kind of even things out a bit down here in the tone curve in a second. Now the blacks, uh, I could play with those later, but for now we're just gonna kind of leave them. They're not really important to the look overall. I'm going to take my vibrance and take that down. Now, what is Vibrance? Vibrance takes all of the colors except for skin tones up or down, right? It's going to affect the skin tones a little bit, but it's mainly going to affect the greens, the yellows, the blues, the purples. Saturation, on the other hand, affects everything. So if I take my Vibrance down, I'm lowering the blues, the greens, the yellows, the purples more than the skin tones, and then I add some saturation on the saturation slider, and that's going to raise the skin tone saturation back up and further enhance that effect. So if you want a in-depth tutorial on how the vibrance and saturation sliders work, go ahead, check out my other video on Lightroom, <laughs> on Lightroom, on my YouTube tutorial. And by the way, if this kind of content is helpful, do me a big favor, hit the like button right now and leave me a comment. It can be anything like, hey, you have cool hair. Or it can be a funny joke, I don't care. But it's just really helpful, gets the YouTube algorithm working in my favor. So if it's been helpful, do me a favor, hit that like button, make sure to leave a comment too. Okay, so what we've done, lowered the vibrance, raised the saturation, somewhere around there, move on to our tone curve, and this is where we're gonna add a little bit more pop back into our image. So I'm gonna start with just going through here, and I've got the point tone curve selected, 
If you need a tutorial on the tone curve, again, I have one on my channel elsewhere, so I'm not going to go too far into this. I'm basically just adding some contrast by adding two dots in here, one in the very center, which is just going to act as an anchor point, and another one up here in the highlights. And what's that's going to do, <laughs> what that is going to do is it's going to add a very small S curve to our image, which is going to add a little bit of contrast. Now, if these aren't even, like for instance, the red I took too far up here, you're going to see that we have a bit of a red cast in the highlights. And I'm okay with that. We're just showing you, you know, in general how to get this look. So you can see I've added some contrast overall. And I could play with this if maybe I want to add some more reds to the highlights or something like that. That's your option. Lastly, I'm going to move it down here into the normal tone curve. That's just applying contrast to all of these colors at once equally. And we can add a little bit more contrast or we can do something kind of interesting and clip the whites a little bit. And as I do that, you're going to see the sky just gets blown out. But now the brightest point of this image is not pure white anymore. It's like a very bright gray. So it's also going to add a little bit of, bit of a sort of vintage vibe to the photo. Just depends what you like. So there's different options there. And we could do the same thing down here. If you click once here, then click on this far left dot, that'll make that line. And you can see that instantly it sort of adds a fade effect to our image. So if you want to, you can play around and really add a lot of fade. Just depends what you're going for. So for now, let's just keep it kind of clean, somewhere around there, before and after. So you might like that. You might like it more normal. This is really about showing you how to do it, not telling you exactly what the right way is. So just feel free to explore, decide what you like for yourself. That might be a little bit too contrasty for me, so I'm gonna drop down, save the highlights a little bit, take the contrast down a little bit too. Good. I want this preset to work on most of my images that I can just copy and paste it. I don't want to edit it for one specific photo and it doesn't work on the rest. So that's why I'm going a little bit more moderate in my adjustments. And then later on, if I want to on every photo, I can just adjust that individually. Okay, so we've done HSL, we've done our color grading detail. Well, you can add that if you want to. That's not really going to affect the preset so much as just your general sharpness in the image. Because this is a JPEG file I'm actually editing, that I got from Unsplash, well, I'm not going to worry about over sharpening it because the more I sharpen it, the more kind of ridiculous it's going to look. I am going to bring my masking up. By holding Alt, you can actually see this overlay and that'll show you what's being sharpened and what's not. So I'm going to turn the masking up so I'm not over sharpening everything on the image, just certain parts. Okay. Last, what can we do here? We can add a little bit of dehaze if you want it to pop a little bit more. Maybe like that. And then if you want to, again, go for more of a vintage vibe, you can try lowering the clarity and raising the texture a little bit. That's a little trick you can try. See if you like it or if you don't. Okay, so here's before, here's after. We've kind of got that clean, bright white look happening. You can adjust this to your liking, whether you think that I've gone a little bit too hard on the highlights, you can dial that back a little, back a little bit. Whatever floats your boat and what works for you. Now let's just take it and paste it on a few other photos and see how we're doing. Looks like we're getting that look without too much issue. And so when I'm actually developing pros presets, it's, it's sort of like this. I'm going to start with one preset overall to get that clean, minimal white look that I like, and then I'm going to test it on hundreds of images, literally hundreds across every single lighting effect you can think of, because you can see as I'm applying it to these images, Yes, it works, but it's not perfect on every single photo. And so you're going to want to test it across a bunch of different photos if you're hoping to make your own presets first. And then after you've done that and you've refined it across all these images to find the best possible kind of compromise across them all, well, then you can save it as your own preset. So let's say that this is absolutely perfect. It's everything I want. I'm ready to save this preset. Just go up here to this plus icon, create preset, and we'll call this Ryan's fun white preset. And you're going to deselect white balance, deselect exposure, basically anything that you don't want applied to every single photo. So white balance, I normally set individually, exposure gets set individually. So I want those to be left unchecked. And then I hit create, I can decide where I want to keep it. And that's it. Now I have my preset, I can use that whenever I want. And that'll speed up my workflow considerably. So if this was helpful, do me a big favor, hit that like button if you haven't so far and leave me a comment. Let me know if you'd like more tutorials like this. It really helps me just figure out what kind of content is the most helpful for you. And subscribe for more editing videos and tutorials and resources, all that good stuff. And lastly, I should say, if you want 
you like the looks of these presets and you want a pack that has really been tested and refined, you can grab that in the description below. I'll make sure to link to it. The main difference between these presets here and the preset we made today is these presets use custom profiles that I've actually built and developed that you can then adjust the amount of the effect that you want on each image, which is kind of helpful and kind of great, but we're not gonna cover that today because it's just a pretty involved process. So if you're interested in those presets, check them out, download the sample. Otherwise, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Like, subscribe, comment. I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, create something awesome. Peace.